Hey, True Believers England team here, and it's a jolly holly rebirth Christmas. The 2017 DC Holiday Special. It's an anthology book. You know my rule about anthologies. Some stories good, some stories bad, some stories eh. And there are some really good stories here, but there's a lot of eh. And I figure what the heck, gonna go over each story individually and see what stands out and see what's eh. I'm surprised the bird didn't respond to me making that noise. The wraparound to set up all the stories is um, called The Reminder. It stars John Constantine, Bebo, and Clark Kent. And John Constantine's being his usual morose self. And he, uh, Bebo's like, hey, don't worry about it. Superman could do anything. And Clark Kent's like, he can't do everything, though. And Bebo's like, hold on. Let me set you straight. And then he begins to tell stories. And that's where we go from here. The first story he tells is Twas the Night Before Christmas, starring Batman. This starts off with a a, a grandmother and his, her grandson, and they're stranded. They're turned away from shelter, and the grandmother dies and swears that she's never going to leave the, the grandson. And we catch up later with Batman and Alfred, and they're in, like, something... It looks like the Bat Tank. It looks like every Batmobile ever assembled, put together into one. I love the shot of Batman going in the snow, by the way. Looks really cool. So, anyway, we cut to later when the grandson now has hostages, and the ghost of the grandmother is saying that he should kill it. Now, here's the problem. We have nothing on how this grandson is. It's supposed to be a redemption story, but is he actually feeling this way is he remorseful we don't get any kind of story on him so it sort of falls flat i understand what it's trying to make us feel it's trying to make us feel like it is a redemption story and we should feel good for the guy but we're never given that moment next up we have green arrow and black canary and you better think twice it's a christmas story because they start this thing off in Santa suits, Santa and Mrs. Claus, respectfully. And uh, it's Black Canary cynical about the holidays, and she's like, oh, I'm surprised you're not because you are always like, ooh, Santa's a shill for the man. And, you know, he used to be the man. Anyway, it's there's nothing really special about this. If they didn't have the Santa suits, this could be a story anytime, told anytime. Um, it's very typical, it's more like filler, you know, cut, print, check the gate, move on. Now we get to a good one, surprise, surprise, it's by Tom King. Yeah, he actually wrote a good story. Anyway, this has a soldier, he's from Easy Company, he's got a, uh, he's got a Nazi officer as a prisoner, and he's shot, and he knows he's gonna die, but he's waiting for his, uh, company to come to take the prisoner off of his hands, and just... To kind of give you a feel that it's a Hanukkah story, not a Christmas story, even though he's wounded terribly, he lasts seven nights waiting for them. So, yeah, you get that. Anyway, uh, I would have liked to have seen more backstory on the, sto on the soldier and why he doesn't just shoot the guy and leave him for dead, but that's a minor nit to pick. This is a really good one. I'm very glad I got to read it, and... After this, I wouldn't mind seeing what Tom Key could do with Sergeant Rock. Next up, Home for the Holidays by Joshua Williams and Neil Gouge. This stars The Flash, and we've seen this a million times before. Uh, it's one of my favorites uh, from Smallville, even, where it's, oh my gosh, you're, they're not going to get their presents. Let's let the speedster deliver the presents, you know, that kind of thing. Except for in this case, everybody's stuck at the airport. Nobody's going to make it home for the holidays, so Flash picks them up one by one. And runs them to their destination. Easy peasy. Here's something I've got to say about this book so far. There are a lot of stories that take place during Christmas. But so far not a lot that invoke the spirit of Christmas. And this one does. And it's kind of sweet. You know, it, this could actually be The Flash, the Christmas special. And hey, I would buy it. Speaking of bad Christmas stories that take place during Christmas but really have nothing to do with it, I'm, I'm going to break a rule here. I'm going to say something bad about a Christopher Priest story drawn by Tom Grummet. This is the uh, Deathstroke Family Christmas or the Wade Family Christmas here. And uh, it's mean. 
it's a very mean spirited story. It has nothing to do with Christmas. It's kind of an I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams kind of thing. Um, I am very shocked at this because usually Christopher Priest is just nails it. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing in the spirit of it. It's not even mean in a uh, in a fun and funny way like Bad Santa. There's no redemption like uh, there is with Billy Bob. It's just, I don't know, that it tries to be edgy, and unfortunately, things that try to be edgy aren't. Next up, we have Driver's Seat by Max Landis and Francis Manipold, starring Superman and Lois Lane on one side of town. Uh, we've got Lois Lane on the other. Superman, Superman's trying to stop a robbery. The guy's like, oh, no, I didn't want to hurt anybody. I just needed the money for the holidays, yada, yada. And that's why I created the jetpack and nobody got hurt. But somebody did get hurt, didn't they? Well, at least somebody's car got hurt. It was Lois Lane's. And since her car got hurt, Clark Kent's like, I'll do something for you. And, of course, he decides to fly her around and be romantic and i understand what they're going for here uh you know the romantic feelings between lois and clark and it was done better by peter j tomasi here it seems forced in a way so it kind of falls flat it's not a bad story this is one of those stories where i described as eh. silent night atomic nights by dan didio and michael clark okay this this is the one with the politics. We all knew it would show up at some point, didn't we? Alrighty, so this is about a town who keeps outsiders out. Whenever outsiders come in, they kill them because they're outsiders. And the only reason for that, you know, that's it. Hey, they don't belong here. Let's get them. And because the leader believes they should be doing that, the leader needs to go. Not subtle. You could tell, not a very subtle message, but it's there. This is the, um, this is, I guess, the wall thing going on, you know, the TDS. Uh, it's actually more subtle than what you would expect. It's one of those things where you could read the story and take it for what it is. But if you really do some thinking, he's really writing about the Donald J. Trump wall and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's there. This is another eh story. Next up, we have a Teen Titans story written by Shea Fontana, drawn by Otto Schmidt. And it doesn't say it's supposed to be in the past, but this is basically Baby's First Christmas starring Starfire. Like, she's never had a Christmas before. And they end up facing down the ghost of Christmas past who's drudging up these fearful memories Except she doesn't have any memories of Christmas because baby's first Christmas. I mean, if it was dated like, oh, in the past, 1990 or something like that, or 82 or whatever you want to do, um, that that's fine. But it doesn't say this. And considering that he pulls out bad memories anyway, it doesn't make sense. This This is bad. This is just a bad story, you guys. Swamp Thing in Echo of the Abyss. Uh, by Nick Klein and, ooh, forgot the other guy's name. Okay, so anywho, this is really done well. This is this is a book that takes advantage of the eight-page story structure. It's about a group of people on a spaceship who believe their world is uh, falling apart below them. And Swamp Thing saves them. He comes in through a little bit of holly, just a holly sprig. It is done very well. I'm I'm actually surprised they could do something this deep in eight pages. One of the best, if not, in, it could be in the top three, but one of the best stories in this book. God bless Spirit Award winner Nick Cassevoli for being able to draw an excellent story, even though he has to deal with Greg Rucka's nonsensical writing to do it. The story is called Solstice. The story stars Batman and Wonder Woman, and what's trying to be done here is showing the juxtaposition between the two outlooks on life. Wonder Woman is hopeful and spiritual, and Batman is morose. This is how they look at life and light and darkness, and it's trying to show that uh, you know the difference and everything, but what it ends up being is it's like a middle schooler trying to explain life to you because they've been through a lot and you don't know my life 
And it really does come off flat and stupid. This is a horribly bad story to end on. But thankfully, we still have the ending of the wraparound. And Bebo's like, well, there you go. See, the world's filled with hope. And they both leave the bar, Clark and, and John. And John's like, hey, I know who you are. Those glasses don't fool me. And Clark ends up inviting him over to the house. And there, it's like a family Christmas. John's asking... John John Kent's asking John Constantine a lot of questions, and at least this part's nice. They're not actually leaving you on that crappy Wonder Woman Batman book, thankfully. The wraparound ends a lot better than it began, and overall, it's at least a sweet little side note. So there you go, gang. That's the DC Holiday Special 2017. There were, what, three good stories, two? Eh, and too bad. Uh, based on that, I couldn't recommend the book. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I wish I had better. Uh, but I do recommend reading those really good stories. So, I mean, that's the, uh, that's the sad part. Anywho, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, hanging out with me and doing this. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe. Ring that notification bell, of course. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till. Help me keep uh, making videos for you. And uh, I thank everybody who's already done that to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching and Merry Christmas.